So welcome back. Once again, this is Kevin from CSMI in Australia. Today doing a video on a radio control excavator and we're going to walk uh, and share with you some of the functions and what's inside the machine itself. So the machine is that far, so we had to pan the camera a bit uh, away. So let's go closer and talk about um, this machine itself. So the machine actually comes with a quick connect. Um, and it's a manual one. It's pretty good quality. It's well designed. It's very simple as a change. And you can actually swap the bucket either way. So it's in an excavator configuration. Uh, what you do is you take it out and you can actually swap over. And now you can make um, the, the machine a shovel. So spring loaded. Very, very simple. Just press it up. It locks in. Comes out. Press it in. Put it this way let's make it an excavator lift it up and it locks in so that's for the quick connect on the bucket i'm going to walk you through the internals of this machine so excuse the camera so before we go there um let me just show you some few things that's on the top so we do have um, a pressure gauge on the inside now this is actually an air filter but it also simulated has a pressure relief valve and there's two of them it's a bit um, strange the way they have done it. However, it still works fine. And I think so. it's good to have two pressure relief valves if you have to, and you can, uh, rather than one. So that's the one that's on the outside. And I'll show you the one that is on the inside and walk you through a few things. Now, here's a pressure gauge up there. So we'll put this um, aside. Let me get something to point. Try to pan the camera so you guys can see uh, all the components on the inside I'm just going to readjust the camera guys so bear with me okay let's see if we can get everything okay we'll do it in two parts so um, we've got a tank we've got two return lines uh, you know they're translucent lines which is good if you see any bubbles in these lines it's a good indication you're not having medium and the pump is cavitating, which means it's trying to draw the medium, which is oil, uh, but the RPM of the pump or the suction is too high and hence it's not getting enough of flow into the suction and hence it's drawing air and hence you're getting bubbles. So if you see bubbles in any of your hydraulic models or in the real life in the pump, it's a good indication that there's no medium, so you need more volume. Uh, also, if you put a smaller diameter hose on the suction side, you're going to restrict the flow and you're going to face the same problem. So make sure you've got a nice big fat suction line that whatever permits for design and then you won't you won't starve the pump um, or flow on medium. So that's what we got up here. We've got these two lines. Um, there's a bottom line actually sucks into the pump and these two return lines. One comes from the valve block and the other one comes from this particular uh, filter which I'll show you up here so you can see this it's the same line so this is a return line hence it's low pressure and hence it's translucent so let's go further what do we have we have um, an electrical motor up here you got three valve blocks one for the boom one for the stick and one for the bucket you've got an electrical motor for the rotation of the car body uh, this is electric so it needs a speed controller um, the boom, the bucket and the, the boom, the stick and the bucket is all hydraulics. Now, from the pump up here, there is a line. I'll see if I can get this even more closer so you guys can see this better. Although it's pointless trying to explain something if I'm not giving the message clearly. So there is a line up here. You can see the diameter is much more smaller. So this is a discharge of the pump. It then comes into a manifold up here. Um, excuse the shakes guys so let's see if I can show this better okay so you got a manifold up here this manifold so the discharge of the pump comes in and then you have actually two outlets sorry I'm out of focus again trying to just juggle everything okay let's see if I can get this better this way okay so you have um, the discharge of the pump coming in. Sorry, this is just 
trying to control everything at the same time it's getting a bit hard um, so once again you got a manifold uh, you got a discharge of the pump coming in and then you got two outlets over here now this one goes to this relief valve over here you got a, you got an adjusting knob and what this does is if you open this knob the oil will actually come in and will just go out right so, so there is that's all that's going to happen it's only as good as having a hose or a pipe through and through if you open this now the moment you shut this you're going to stop the oil over here and it's going to feed more valve more oil into the valve block right so tightening this will increase the pressure of your hydraulics opening it is going to allow the oil to flow back into the tank so that's what that does right now it then goes further from this valve block and it goes let me just set this camera up so i can show you again just give me a sec okay so it comes from the second manifold into this um valve block well it comes from second from the manifold into this hose and it then goes into a pressure gauge so you can see uh the pressure reading which is um up here and then camera sorry guys okay and then it actually um, goes this camera is just sliding in just give me a sec okay uh it goes into an external uh pressure reducing valve now once again if you open this the all just going to go flow back from here into the tank the moment you tighten this you're going to allow more oil to go into the machine so that's what actually happens um, with the hydraulics over there. You don't really need uh, two, two valve blocks. I'm just surprised that they have um, provided for two of them. Now, in the valve block itself, if you look closely, these, these are lines. These lines are the actual discharge lines in the valve block that go to the cylinder. So you have two. You have one set of lines that will actually expand or contract the cylinder, whichever way you actually plumb it, it doesn't really matter. And when you're expanding, the oil from the other side of the cylinder must return. And that is on the second side of this valve block at the bottom over here. So if you look at this valve block, I'll bring it closer. You will see this translucent line up here. This one's connected to the valve block. And what happens here is the oil actually returns when the cylinder is contracting or expanding. So if you're expanding, the oil will go from the pressure side on one side to expand the cylinder, where it has always is oil on both sides of the cylinder. So the oil must return from the other side and that will actually come back to the tank from here. So once again, uh, we'll go further. We've got then the receiver that talks to the radio. Uh, we have a speed controller. This is for the hydraulics. And then at the bottom, you can see there are some more speed controllers, which is for the tracks and the car body rotation. So I hope that video was um, informative. It's a little bit hard to grasp. Um, especially when everything is just cramped up. So I do apologize for that. But the basic thing is uh, the pump will always pump to the valve block. And then on the way to the valve block, you have a manifold. This manifold, if you open the pressure relief valve, will send the bulk of the oil back to the tank because it acts as a hose. But if you shut this thing, then no oil is going to go back to the tank, which means the bulk of the oil is going to go into your valve block, right? Now, they have just mimicked the same setup twice, maybe because you can actually control um, the pressure from the outside of the machine using this one. Uh, it still, def it still you know, defies why you need to have two, but they have added two in the machine. Uh, so you can control it from there. And of course, you can see the pressure gauge and the oil will return back into the tank which is up here so that's the bulk of um, the hydraulics within this particular excavator as usual if you have any questions um, you can always email us or visit us at our website this machine is available to buy from our website 
And if you have any problems, let us know how we could help you. Once again, this is Kevin from CSMI. Catch you on the next video.